you feel exhausted, empty, and unable to cope with the demands of life. You wake up feeling drained, unmotivated, out of sync, and you also lack scope and focus. You know you shouldn't feel this way, but you have nothing specific to pinpoint and say, that's the reason for the way you feel. Nothing is wrong with you, nothing hurts, yet something feels off. And this sense of feeling off is often misinterpreted by colleagues, friends, and even family. They don't get it, so you just smile and try to live your life one day at a time, pretending that nothing's wrong. You are not lazy, you work hard, give it your best, and yet life somehow feels devoid of meaning. In this place, nothing presents interest, and most of the time, all you want to do is sleep and be left alone. If you find yourself in this short, very brief, and disturbingly oversimplified scenario for more than a couple of days, you may be at risk of suffering a burnout. Burnout is a relatively new term that was first coined by Herbert Freudenberger in 1974 in a book entitled Burnout, The High Cost of High Achievement. The extinction of motivation or incentive, especially where one's devotion to a cause or relationship fails to produce the desired results, was the original definition of the term. In simpler words, if you start feeling like you hate your job, like nothing makes a difference anymore regardless of your input, or if you simply lack the energy to do something, you are showing signs of burnout. Your job usually has a strong say in this, but certain personality traits such as perfectionism and pessimism are notable factors as well. Burnout is not just a figure of speech anymore, as it has been declared a legitimate medical diagnosis by the World Health Organization. In their words, it is a syndrome resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. While burnout is often wrongly identified as just a feeling, we can now actually observe changes in areas of the brain using functional MRIs under certain kinds of experimental stresses. These changes especially occur in the limbic system, which is responsible for the feeling part. Burnout can make our amygdala larger and affect how our prefrontal cortex operates. This might sound scary, but one can actually see it as validation that there are actual changes in our brain that point towards our feelings and state of mind. So, how did you and I get to this exhausting state of mind? The reality of today is harsh and has little empathy for our mental health. In less than two years, we've gone from a stressful office environment, sprinkled with random smiles, awkward encounters and oddly hilarious pet stories by the elevator, to a computer and a smartphone screen which replaces it all. And what we lost in the transition is something precious and near impossible to replace. The little things in everyday life that made us smile without even realising it. Yes, Joan still sends you funny emails, maybe even a funny video of her cat every now and then. But is it the same? If you've been feeling burnt out and hopeless lately, worry not, because there are certain things you can do to start feeling like your old self again. Number one, asking yourself why and what might seem to be too much right now, but the cause of burnout could be something easy enough to identify on your own. Are you feeling that way because you're taking on way more responsibility than you can handle? Or maybe your habit of perfectionism is something to blame. Or perhaps you need help with something, but are always afraid to ask. If your problem meanders somewhat to the self-inflicted territory, it might be worthwhile to sit down and think about why you do what you do. And if you think that the cause is entirely related to your work life, then... Number two, talk about it at your workplace. The goal is to communicate that you feel overburdened with work and are willing to set realistic expectations. Starting a conversation with a superior can feel intimidating, but it is much needed. Be honest with yourself and tell them the probable causes for feeling burnt out and readjust your position in the organization if necessary, even if it means taking a step back on the corporate ladder. Number three, embrace social support. Friends, family, co-workers, mentors might seem far away in these difficult situations, but seeking support and genuine warmth might help you cope with burnout. If you have an employee assistance program, do give it a shot 
or simply call that relative or friend that listens. Social support might be the strongest tool in your arsenal. Number 4. Exploring relaxing activities like yoga, meditation, or simply taking a walk in the park that you haven't seen since last fall, or ever, might also get the ball rolling. Open Google Maps and search for the nearest three museums. We bet there is at least one you haven't visited, because it's close and you can always do it, right? Number 5. Sleep and exercise. Two of the pillars of well-being that get easily neglected and that show immediate effects on our mind and body, these two are overlooked and undervalued and we could certainly use these in our favour. Regular physical activity will help you better deal with stress. Physical activity of any kind, paired with good sleep and a healthy social circle, will do wonders. Last but not least, number six, mindfulness, joins the list. Mindfulness is an act that focuses on your breathing. It increases awareness and invites you to be in the now. We find refuge in simply breathing in our calm pattern, even in the stressful work environment, focusing on our happy place. Keep your mind open and consider any options that you feel might be healthy for you. Do take burnout seriously and do not let a difficult environment or job get the best of you. If you are running out of ideas or you feel you are unable to get ahead for a prolonged period of time, do seek a professional to find out what's wrong and how it can be treated. Meanwhile, please do share your story. Let's get the conversation started in the comments section below. We would love to be part of your social circle.